Hello my loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. So last Christmas I mentioned that I wanted to practice my knitting more this year and since I said I was going to do it, I have to do it, right? <laughs> Now that's no shade to knitting. I might have knit a hat or two in my day and I've seen knitting patterns pop up that I would absolutely love to make. I have big aspirational knitting goals, but there's just something about crochet that keeps pulling me back. I'm really good at it. I'm fast at it. I know it and understand it. And plus, since Tunisian crochet came along, I haven't been able to make time for other crafts. So I decided if I'm going to make good on my promise to practice knitting this year, I have to start at some point and that time is now. Thanks to my good friends at Be Cozy, I am now the proud owner of a Chunky Chenille Blanket Kit and I can start my knitting journey. I am about to embark on a quest to find out if there is space for knitting needles in my crochet heart. Now if you are down for the ride, hit that like button and stick around. And before we go anywhere, of course we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. Yes, I did reheat yesterday's coffee because in this house we do not waste a drop. And today's cup of caffeine sponsor is our good friend Laura and when donating, Laura said it's 4 p.m on the west coast in time for one last cuppa. I'm loving your videos, tutorials, and reviews. I just bought a set of needles. I'm looking forward to starting a project. Thank you for sharing your skills. And thank you so much for your generosity, Laura. There is no better duo than coffee and yarn, so you are in for a great night. Now, if you like my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows, I might shout you out my next video. Now, let's get knitting. You can do it, Tony. You can do it. You can do it. Let's start with a quick overview of Be Cozy. So they're a women-owned small business that's based in Holland, Michigan. Now that's only about two hours drive from me. So I absolutely love that it's a small business, women-owned, local to me, like tick, tick, tick. I love it already. The site is filled with yarns for those who like to knit on the chunky side. In addition to the chenille yarn that I'm using today, they also have merino roving, they've got tube yarn, they have faux fur as well as velvet. You can buy the yarn, buy the ball, individually if you have your own project or they also have kits. The kits have all of the yarn you need for your projects as well as the tools and links to tutorials to make that project. I've got Be Cozy linked down below so you can check them out for yourself but now let's look at the kit that I received. There you go that's cute okay. So I went for the Chunky Chenille in gray. This is a really thick rope-like yarn. This chenille is made from 100% polyester. You're getting 24 yards per skein and I got seven skeins to make a blanket that should be 40 by 60. Now you know I'm not making a gauge swatch so we're working off of a wing and a prayer today. The yarn itself feels so soft and cuddly. I've always been a fan of these thick chenille yarns even though I don't use them very much but I thought this would be perfect because we need more blankets for our den. I think this would be wonderful to cuddle up underneath when we're watching our movies. So I went with this nice medium gray color that's gonna match the navy gray and cream color scheme we have in our basement. In addition to the yarn, I also got a set of some of the chunkiest needles I've ever seen. These are 25 millimeter knitting needles and these are actually Chow Goo, which is a great needle arts brand. They're nice and smooth bamboo with not too sharp of a point here so I don't have have to worry about like poking myself too hard. They are circular knitting needles so they have a fixed cord that goes from one to the other. Great choice to Larissa and the team for putting in circulars instead of straight needles for this kit. And the last piece included in the kit was some general instructions on how I'm going to make my blanket. So it kind of lists out like cast on this certain amount, work the stitch in this way, bind off in this way, but I need a little bit more instruction than that. Thankfully Larissa does include a video tutorial link. I'm I'm gonna start this. Wish me luck guys. I'm like low-key nervous. I'm like weirdly nervous but also a little overconfident at my skills in this. I've knit probably three things to completion in my life but never something quite this large and using this type of technique. I've never used knitting needles quite this big so that's gonna be a new challenge for me but I'm feeling optimistic so let's get the video queued up and see how this goes. So I have the video queued up here. It's called Knit a Chunky Blanket with Big Needles. Right here on YouTube it is a public video so theoretically if you got the kit from Be Cozy or source your yarn from anywhere really you should be able to follow this tutorial to make yourself a blanket as well. Okay let's do this. I know I'm, I'm stalling. I'm stalling a little bit but I'm actually really really excited for this not only for the practicality of having a blanket in the basement but also trying out this technique that I've been wanting to really get into for a long time. Let's knock it out. Let's go. <laughs> I 
would like to show you how to knead with needles. I prefer my knitting uh, to knitting with needles, especially with needles. It's much simpler, at least for me. But I received a lot of requests from people uh, asking to show how to knit with needles in uh, Chanty Chanel yarn. So today I will show how to... This is hilarious. So this is Larissa. She is the owner of the company. I love that she is running her own YouTube channel and premiering in her videos as well. But it's funny that she starts this video essentially saying that she developed this hand knitting style and started posting these videos and people just really wanted to work with needles and that's why she made this video. So even the owner of the company says, this is much easier by hand, but if you want needles, I'm gonna give them to you. Love that for you, Larissa. Love it. <laughs> so it looks like Larissa is planning to make her sample in garter stitch where you knit 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 as you turn the blanket i am actually going to use stockinette instead i love the smooth look of those knit stitches on the front and the nice bumpiness of the pearls on the back so i know enough about knitting to know that i do want to work this up in a slightly different stitch but i think it's still going to be gorgeous So we've reached the point where I have to cast on my stitches. Larissa has given us a very simple cast on and I'm keeping my stitches loose. Um, one, because I want a nice squishiness, a nice openness and relaxed fabric to my blanket, but also I think it's just gonna make it a lot easier to knit once I have all these stitches on here. They are gigantic. They're absolutely huge. So I'm really looking forward to kind of that big squish factor. So I'm gonna keep my tension very loose. So I need to get all of my stitches stitches on here and here we go. So I've got my casts on all done. I'm definitely at the point of the project where I'm rewarding myself for every single step. So I have to say this is a pretty darn good looking cast on. Oh my God, Ugh. okay, so this is proving to be tricky. Larissa mentions in the video that the mechanics of working with yarn this thick on needles this big is much different than just traditional knitting with smaller needles. So I think I've got some getting used to here. I don't know what happened at this point of my cast on, but hopefully that all cleans itself up. I'm getting down to the end of my very first row. Initial reactions, I'm unimpressed. <laughs> And I know I'm still at the cast on and even when I'm working into a chain, sometimes it's tricky. So I'm not gonna judge the entire craft from my experience so far, but um, I can say that this is probably gonna be my least favorite part of this entire project. I can feel it. <laughs> It's just really, really fiddly right now, and it's tough to know if I'm actually doing anything right, but essentially I'm just knitting my first row off of the cast on, uh, and I can definitely tell where some of my loops that I created on my cast on were a little tighter than others, so I'm just gonna try and keep things a bit looser from here. So I'm going to just kind of jump into my knowledge of knitting from this point because I know that since I'm doing stockinette instead of garter I need to now switch to purl stitches instead of doing knit stitches from this point so I turn my work I bring this here I think something like that okay I think I need to look up a video on how to purl because this is one of those moments where it's like I'm feeling confident and I think that's wrong I think that's probably wrong if I'm feeling overconfident at this point I'd rather just look it up and make sure I'm right 
then guessing that I'm right, and then having been wrong. So let's look up a quick video on how to do a curl. So how to curl. Uh, let's see, sheep and stitch. Bring it on. Hey, I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com, and today I'll show you how to do the curl stitch. Davina, why are you talking so fast? Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Cute little okay. music, all right? Cast on from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. okay? Now I'm gonna take the yarn, and I'm gonna throw it Okay, so this might be me again being overconfident in my knitting skills, but I'm 99% sure that the conventional wisdom is that you slip the first stitch regardless. So I'm gonna slip it, and I think I'm slipping it purl wise because my yarn's in the front as opposed to being in the back. So I'm gonna keep my yarn. I don't know, I don't know, y'all. I'm guessing. I'm clearly guessing. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna I'm gonna insert it here and I'm gonna just slip it off. And I think that's what gives me clean edges, I think. Trial and error, you know? I'm still a beginner. I'm learning, right? Here we go. Okay, so I'm inserting the next one. Back to the front. Okay, so over to the front. Like that. The yarn is going to move back to the front around the right knee. Okay, flick it off. Flick it. Flick it a wrist. That, grab it and pull down. Ugh. So it's nice Get and secure. In there. And then pull the working yarn just to tighten up our first purl stitch. Okay, into the second uh, stitch. I hate it. To the I hate this. <laughs> I'm like two stitches in and I am struggling for my life. Oh my gosh, see? And this be the stuff, this be the stuff that I'd be like, if I was crocheting, I wouldn't have to do this. But I get it. I get to achieve what you need to achieve. You sometimes have to go through it. And I'm going through it. Okay, so it was from right to left over, flick it off, right? And then I gotta pull that down, make sure that's nice and tall. Tension is gonna be a big issue here. I can feel it. Ah, okay. If you have tips on how to soften up my tension, I would love to hear them. Put them down in the comments literally right now, right here at the beginning, because I'm still struggling. Ooh. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. I can, I can do this. Okay. In, over, ugh. flick, lift. At least for now. This is what we'll do for now. We'll take our time. We'll take our time. I just want to be good at it already, you know? Don't don't we all do that when we're trying something new? It's like, I'm a crocheter, I'm trying knitting, and I feel like I should just be good at this naturally for some reason. And I'm not, and it's kind of annoying. Ugh. It's in, over, off, and lift. Just till I get that tension right, because it's, it's still way too tight. I can feel it. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've been holding my breath for like five minutes straight. I just finished my pearl row. I mean, it's I have no way of knowing if this actually looks good. Like, am I doing a good job? Like, can you even tell right now? Because I can't tell. But I can see those knit stitches emerging a bit on the front. So like, I'm doing something right. But I have to say those pearl rows are gonna be tricky. I've got a groove. I'm feeling good. First gain is kind of almost done. I feel like it's smaller than it was a minute ago. So I'm gonna relocate. I'm also pretty darn low on coffee and it's still before noon. So I'm gonna get a fresh cup. I'm gonna relocate and find a nice comfy spot. And I'm going to work on the rest of this skein and get a little bit more length on my blanket. My comfy seat now acquired, I can get back to my project. I will need a little bit of entertainment. On the TV front, I did just finish a series called Well Mania on Netflix. That one has Celeste Barber, who is my absolute favorite stand-up comic from Australia. Big ups to Celeste, I'm glad to see her on my screen in her own Netflix show. And I think she has maybe her second Netflix special coming out relatively soon. So I'm gonna take a little break from TV though to get into some books. I am just about to finish up a really good book. This one is called Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. It's about four aging female spies who get set up by their organization to take the fall for some corruption that's happening at the top. I'm about 97% done and I've blown through this book. It is really, really good. So I'm glad to reach just the cherry on top as they close out this story. It's got me thinking about what I'm gonna read next though. A friend of mine did recommend A Court of Thorns and Roses 
Pieces by Sarah J Moss. I think this is a pretty popular book in the fantasy category, which is honestly a category I don't get into very often. That's why my friend recommended it. She's into some fantasy, into some romance, and some other genres that I don't typically lean towards. So we exchanged some books to help us kind of break out of our normal book ruts that we fall into. So I put that one on request from my library, but one that I've been waiting for just came up. That one's called Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. I remember when I first put this on request and I read through the description, I was like, I've got a feeling this book is going to tear me apart. But as long as it's well written and there's some redeeming quality at the end, I'm open to that possibility. So as soon as I finish Killers of a Certain Age, I'm gonna start Salvage the Bones, all as a backdrop to my very first knit blanket. Let's go. Come on, baby girl. Be kind to the minute. And then we'll be kind to you. Be kind. Be kind. Come on. Let me do the knit row. This is, this is the fun part. Okay? So yarn in the back. Slip on. But you're not paying attention. She, I'm trying to teach you how to knit. She, listen. Listen. With your ears, not with your teeth. Okay? Oh, now you don't want to. You know what? I can't with you. I can't with you, little girl. So we have finished our first ball of yarn so far. Um, I'm loving the effect. I think it's absolutely lovely. Everything that you look for in a beautiful knit blanket is happening here. It's giving cozy, it's giving luscious, it's giving scrumptious, it's giving squish. But when it comes to the actual mechanics of the knitting, I am having a pretty rough go of things. I don't know if you can tell, but I have not sorted out my tension at all. My hands don't really know what they're doing. They've got an idea of where they're meant to go, but my needle keeps ending up between my fingers or I'm scooping in a way that feels like I'm using my entire arm. Like I low key feel like I'm lifting weights working on this blanket. It is light as a feather so far. So I think the finished blanket is gonna be nice and cozy, but this process isn't one that I can fall into, find that rhythm. I'm not quite there yet. I'm giving myself the benefit of the doubt though, because I am clearly doing something right. I think I'm gonna have to figure out how I can make these loops maybe a little looser. There's definitely some room to grow. There's some opportunity to get a little bit better. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the second skein of yarn is gonna treat me a little bit better than the first. Now I did look through Be Cozy's videos and found one where she talks about how she likes to join the chenille yarn. I'm about done with this skein so I need to open up a second one. And what I appreciate is she's super real about how she joins it. She mentions that some people like to burn it, but then you get this hard piece of plastic. Instead of burning it, we're just gonna put a knot in it. She recommends, I guess what would be called like a square knot, roll it one way and then the other way and put in a knot and tie that super duper tight. And then I'm just gonna cut it super close to the knot. It's a little tricky to actually see where the fibers of the knot are, but once you find it, this knot should be secure enough to allow us to cut very close. And it just came apart. Okay, let me try that again. <laughs> okay, I think I got it that time. I don't know what I did last time, but I think we got it this time. Okay, and then I should be able to pull these two together. So this makes a slightly larger knot but that invisible knot 
is a little more secure than whatever the heck I just did. So I'm gonna pull that nice and tight, cut close to the knot. I'm gonna try that again. Maybe not quite as close as I did last time. Maybe that was too close. Oh, I cut the wrong end. Oh my gosh. I think I need some lunch, y'all. I think I need some lunch real bad. Right, third attempt at literally just tying a knot. Cut the ends, not the working yarn. So it's not the most beautiful knot, but it's gonna give us what we need for this project. Hey, so we had to relocate because Bay needed to take a little nap. But I have to say, this blanket is working up very nicely. So here we are with three skeins of progress. I gave it a quick measurement. We're at just about 40 inches wide, which is exactly what we were going for. And at this point, we're at 30 inches long, which is fantastic because we're not even halfway through our yarn, but we're already at the halfway point for the length that this blanket should be. Now, I did look it up before I started and stockinette stitch, which is what I'm working with, knit on one side, purl on the other side, does work up faster than garter stitch, which is what's recommended for this project. I definitely understand why they recommend garter stitch though, because you knit every single row which is a whole lot easier than transitioning from knit to purl. I know purling is problematic in knitting in general. I can say for myself, purling, not fun, not easy, not enjoying it, but it's totally worth it for this texture that I'm getting on the front. And no, it's not perfect. I'm sure if you've got a trained eye, you can see some twisted stitches. I've got some really interesting gappiness and some loopy stitches going on. But overall, for my first project, I'm pretty darn pleased with myself. At this point, I feel like I clearly don't know everything. There's a lot I still need to practice, but I know just enough to be interested in how to fix some of the issues going on here. Another thing I noticed, and I'm sure it's because of my cast on but I have all of these little loops at the bottom of my project. I was hoping for something that looked like a cleaner chain but again that's something that I'd want to research for my next project. How do I clean up that cast on edge and is there a different type of cast on that I should have used for this project. I haven't lost any stitches yet which does feel really good and it's just big enough for me to lay over my lap so it is comfortable while I'm working on it. I started working on this project today at 11 o'clock in the morning. It is now about a quarter to four so it's really slow going which is just something that has always irked me about knitting. I am somebody who loves the process of crochet and I love for that process to be relatively fast. So this is forcing me to have to slow down, be very intentional, pay attention to what I'm doing. Hi, Sigishi. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, there's a sweet girl. So Sheba has definitely been trying to eat my knitting needles. Let's see if she'll do it. Come here. Come here. You wanna eat it? You're gonna eat that knitting needle. Oh, you just want some loving? Oh, sweet baby, go anytime. Wait, oh, see, there we go. House Panther, this one right here. She is a menace. No, okay, all right, dang. You got a good one in there. Let me hide these from you, uh-uh. Anywho, so I'm gonna get back to it. I mean, ideally, I would love to finish this tonight, so I'm gonna see how many more skeins I can get through before dinner time.
All right, honeybees, so we're at a great place because I just about finished my sixth skein of yarn. And while I was planning to go into my seventh, I really think we're long enough. Having this blanket pulled up to my chest, it's still well over my feet. And that's about all I need to be able to comfortably nap under a blanket. So I think I have just enough left for a bind off. I, I think this is enough. I kind of measured it a couple times over the top and I was like, I think we can make it. So I've pulled up the video from Miss Larissa again and we are about to start our bind off. So Miss Larissa just said I need three lengths of the width of my project to cast off. I think I have just an, like just enough. Oh God, this is where the anxiety starts kicking in. Okay, well worst case, if I don't have enough, I have a seventh skein in there. I can throw a knot at it. Fingers crossed. So now we're playing a little yarn chicken because why wouldn't we with our very first full size project? I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, here we go. Okay, so she said grab two stitches and then over and pull through both. And we take them off. Okay. This, oh, okay, so this one goes back on. It's backwards as hell. Okay. Okay. Grab this working yarn yep. and put this to yep. slip off. Slip off and, this and transfer goes back. back. Okay. See what we have here? Okay. We have this yep. goes back. I think I got it. Okay, so she is telling me to insert under the two insert through the back loop of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through. Right, and then slip that back onto my left needle. What is this bind off called? I don't know, but it's working. I'm getting a nice clean edge on the top. I think I need to loosen this up, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull through, and just lift it up a little bit higher. My concern is if I lift it up too high, I'm gonna run out of yarn for my bind off. Like, oh my gosh. Knitting is stressful, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, here we go. Two loops, yarn over, pull through, and put it back. Okay. Oof. Oh no. God. Okay. Two loops, yarn over, pull it through, and throw it back. Wait, lift it up and throw it back. Okay. 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 Two through the back. Yarn it over, pull it through, lift it up, pull it off, throw it back. Okay. I could do this. Oh my gosh, this is so uncomfortable. Okay, we are cutting it close. This is all I have left. And I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches to bind off. And I think it's really just, I'm having some pretty, pretty major gauge issues. Feeling like a broken record, but it really is kind of <laughs> the bane of my existence right now because I feel like if I could just get that down, I could get this entire craft down. But I'm sure there's people that say the same thing about crochet. I have, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches left to bind off. I've got maybe four inches of yarn left here, so I'm gonna stop at this point and add that seventh skein of yarn. All right, let's get these last seven stitches done. Two stitches left, so I'm gonna tune back into the video and see how she says to finish this off. Yeah, I messed this up totally. I was kind of yarning over the hook. I was kind of going in, yarning over. She's yarning under, which maybe works a little bit easier. So keep doing this with off, and now we have one stitch left. This is our left stitch, and now we can insert this end inside. Wait, what? Oh, so I take it off. Oh, and then cut and just pull it through? Oh, okay, okay, I could do that. All right, I got one stitch left. She said to take the end, pull it through, and just pull it. Oh. 
I don't know why I was expecting fireworks and a magic trick and I don't know, freaking rabbit to jump out of the hat, but that was it. I just cast off my very first knit project. I did it, y'all. And I only have two ends to weave in, and I'm gonna end it, weave it in with my finger. Okay, so I'm going to straighten up, change locations, and let's wrap up this first big knit project experience. Well, honeybees, I am pretty darn proud of myself today. I wasn't sure how this experience was gonna go. You know, I had heard that you should start with something chunky so you can really see your stitches and really be able to practice these different techniques in knitting, but I still wasn't convinced. Even after the cast on, the first few rows, even the first few balls of yarn, I just wasn't completely sold on knitting. But I can tell you this, based on this experience, I'm really, really glad that I tried this out. Now there's a lot wrong with this blanket, major tension issues. I contacted my best friend and sent her a picture and I'm like, girl, what am I doing wrong? She's like, you're not twisting your stitches, but there's definitely some major tension issues. It's kind of up and down. And I can certainly see that when I look, there's just random loops that are sticking out. There are certain areas that are a lot more gappy and holy than other areas. I could look at everything that I feel like I did wrong in this experience, or I can look at the fact that I finished my very first knit blanket in about six hours. I'm living in that very confident beginner stage when it comes to knitting. There's a lot that I don't know that I probably don't know and it's gonna come with practice and spending a lot more time with this craft but overall I had a really good experience here as a crocheter I'm gonna be completely honest I've had a chip on my shoulder when it comes to knitting for a really long time I've had experiences when I go into yarn stores and I say I'm a crocheter and the whole vibe changes folks don't want to be quite as helpful they're not as knowledgeable they don't have suggestions on things that are gonna work for me and that can be definitely a deterrent but when I remove those negative influences and experiences I can can really warm to all that knitting has to offer for me as a crocheter. I've got regular crochet down. Tunisian crochet is like second nature to me. So why not try knitting and sample the entire needle arts rainbow? Oof. Oh my gosh. Oof. It's just as cozy and wonderful as I was hoping it to be. As a first step in this phase of my knitting journey, I'm going to call this project a success and I couldn't have done it without my friends at Be Cozy. So big thank you to you, Larissa, and everybody who's working at your shop there in Holland. Now, if you wanna check out these kits, there is a link down in the description. And if you go to the Be Cozy site and put in your email address, you can get 10% off of your purchase. So don't miss out on that. So I have to ask, for my friends that are crocheters, have you tried knitting? If so, or if not, tell me why. And if you are a knitter, please let me know some resources, ideas, or patterns for what should be my next project when it comes to practicing my knit stitches. I'm not done here. I am not deterred. I am not swearing off knitting at this point, but I definitely want to go into a project that is a little bit more my speed. Maybe working with DK weight, I need smaller needles, something where I can get my merino wool on. I'm feeling optimistic. I'm feeling encouraged and I can't wait to get a set of needles in my hands again. Thanks a million to Be Cozy for helping me out with this and thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye! <laughs>